You're giving a presentation and you have shared your Excel workbook. Now you want to highlight certain cells or rows. How would you go about that? Well, one way would of course be to click in the cell, perhaps even select an entire row and apply a background color to that. But that's not a very dynamic approach because if I now want to highlight a different row, I would first have to undo this formatting and then format another cell once again. A better approach is to use a special kind of function, which is the cell function. You're probably not familiar with this one, but yes, there does indeed exist a function called cell within Excel. Now let's give it a shot. So we write equal sign cell. And so what this function does is it will return information about the currently selected cell. This could be information about the location, uh, the contents or the formatting. So we open the parentheses and then we have to tell this function what kind of information we're looking for. Now, in our case, what we need to make this work is information about the row and the column of the cell. So fortunately that does exist here. There's an option for row. So let's select that and notice how we put row in between two double quotation marks. Then I close my parentheses and press enter. You can see the result is three because it is given the row number of the currently selected cell. Now you might argue that my current selection is actually in row four. So shouldn't it tell, give us four? Well, if I click anywhere else, you can see it still doesn't change. Well, that's because functions only update when we explicitly ask them to be updated or when we type something and press enter. So if I write hi here and press enter, notice that it now has updated to six. One other approach you could go about this is to go to the formulas tab in the ribbon and then click on calculate now. And so that will automatically update every function in your workbook. Now, of course, this is still not very dynamic. Preferably we would have it so that whenever we click in a different cell, automatically this function will be recalculated. Fortunately, there's a way to do this, but it might be a little bit scary because we are going to be using a very little bit of visual basic. Now, don't be alarmed. Um, it is super simple and I'll walk you through it. Now to use Visual Basic within Excel, we must have the developer tab in our ribbon. And so you can see it, I have it over here, but yours might not be there. So how to make it appear? Well, you go to, go to any tab and you do a right mouse button click at an empty part of the ribbon. And then you get this pop-up pane here where we can click on customize the ribbon. So when you click on that, you will get this option where you can customize your own ribbon. What we need to do is to make the developer tab appear. So normally you should be able to find the developer tab here on the right hand side under main tabs. Then you scroll down a bit and you can see I have it over here developer. And so I make sure to check it. Now you can see this developer tab, it contains a code group. And within that code group, we have the visual basic editor functionality. That's the one we're looking for. If for some reason you can't find it here under the main tabs, then you can also manually add it. What you need to do is here, instead of popular commands, click either on all commands or on all tabs. I'll click on all commands. And so this will take a while because now it's loading in all of the commands available within Excel. And then you scroll down a bit. And so here you want to be looking for a visual basic editor. So that's the one here. You click on it and then you click on the add button to add it to any part of the ribbon that you're looking for. So once you've done that, then you can click on OK. And now the developer tab should have become available in your ribbon. So click on the developer tab and now click on Visual Basic on the left-hand side. This will open up a new editor. Now on the left-hand side, you can see all of the different objects that are available to us. In our case, what we want to do is to select the current sheet. So in our case, that's here, sheet one. So I double click on that and now this should appear here. Now, if this looks empty, it's probably because you have general selected here as object. So what you want to do is select worksheet here and then those two lines of code should appear. Now, all we need to do is in between those two lines, we are going to indent this by one tab. So I click on the tab key and now I write application dot calculate. And so all we're doing here is that whenever we change the selection in our worksheet, our application will recalculate every function. So that's everything we need to do. That's quite easy, right? So application.calculate. Once you've done that, you can actually close down this visual basic window and we go back to Excel. And so now whenever we click in a new cell, you can see the row number automatically updates. Isn't that beautiful? 
Now, this was for the row. I'll write it right over here. We also have a similar approach for the column. So I write equal sign cell. I open the parentheses and then I select call here in between two quotation marks. I close the parentheses, press enter, and I'll write call here. And so you can see now this will give me the call number. Very useful. And so using this information, we have direct information about the currently selected cell. So that's very powerful. Now we need to use another function within Excel in order to highlight entire rows. Now for that, we will be using the row function. So I write equal sign row. And so what the row function does is it will provide us the row number of the referenced cell. Now, what's the difference with the cell function and the row function? Well, the cell function will give us information about a currently selected cell, whereas with the row function, it will give us information about the reference cell. So the difference is in between the selected cell and the referenced cell. Now, we ourselves could provide a reference to the row function. And then, for example, if I click here in H2, then it will give me a two because that's the row number of the H2 cell. However, giving an argument to the row function is optional. If you decide to leave the row function empty and simply close the parentheses, it will reference the current cell where you wrote the function in. So if I now press enter, you can see the result is six because I wrote the row function in the sixth row. Okay, so those are all the puzzle pieces that we need to get this working. Now we will be using conditional formatting. Now, conditional formatting is a way to format our Excel worksheet based on conditions, right? So it's not like we paint something and then it stays there. No, it will dynamically change depending on the conditions we provide. Now, to add conditional formatting, the first thing that you need to do is to select the area where you want the formatting to be applied to. In our case, that's the entire data range, excluding the headers, because I don't want to format the headers. Now, to select that data, the best way to go about this is to select the top left cell of the data you want to select, and then press the shortcuts, Control, Command, Right. If you're on a Mac, you will have to use Command, Shift, Right. So I press Control, Shift, Right arrow, and then I press Control, Shift, Bottom arrow. Now, what this does is whenever you use this combination of Control, Shift, and an arrow, it will select everything up until the next empty cell. So this is a very powerful shortcut combination to quickly make selections. Now we go to the home tab and here we select conditional formatting under styles. Now in our case, we want to add a new rule. So I click on new rule and now we have to tell Excel what kind of rule we want to add. Now in our case, we are going to be using a formula to determine which cells to format. That's arguably the hardest way to use conditional formatting, but it's necessary here and I'll walk you through it how to do this. So we select here on use a formula to determine which cells to format. And now, of course, we will have to use a formula. Now, what kind of formula should we use? Well, the best way to think about this is like this. You're probably familiar with using an if function within Excel. How an if function works is we provided a logical test and depending if that logical test returns true or false, we have something else change. Now, what we need to put here to format the values is a function that is like the first argument of the if statement. So it should just return true or false. And whenever it's true, some formatting will happen. If it's false, no formatting will happen. So let's scroll up here. And now we will be writing our formula. So like any other formula, we start with an equal sign. Now you could write just regular Excel functions within here, but that might sometimes get a little bit confusing, but because you don't get like nice pop-ups indicating what kind of functions you can use. So another approach is to manually select cells that contain formulas. So in our case here in column I, we have already written some formulas. And so we could simply reference these cells and use the formulas that way. So in our case, what we're looking to do is we want to check the currently selected row. And so we can find that here where we use the cell function that gives us back the currently selected row number. And then we are going to check if that's equal to the current row number. And so then we simply write out row, open and close the parentheses to select or to get back the current row number in our data. Now notice when we made a selection and we clicked on I3 to select the cell that contains the cell function, 
it automatically plays dollar signs around my letters and my numbers. So this means this is an absolute reference and so it will never change. We will always be referencing that cell. And that's exactly what we're looking to do. So that's very good. Then we click here on format to decide on the formatting we want to apply whenever this condition is true. So we have number formatting, font formatting, border formatting, and fill formatting. In our case, I will go with fill formatting. I will select this color here. And so whenever we select a cell, I want the entire row to get this background color. So I click on OK. I click on OK once again. And so you can see whenever I now click somewhere, it automatically updates here this cell I3. And so because we're referencing that cell I3 from our conditional formatting, you can see the row automatically gets highlighted wherever we click. Now, let's make two more changes. The first one is I no longer want to reference this cell, but directly incorporate the cell function within our conditional formatting so that our code is a little bit cleaner. And secondly, I want to also add additional formatting to the currently selected cell. So I go to conditional formatting and because I want to change an existing rule, I click on manage rules. At first glance, I don't see any rules here because it's only showing me formatting rules for the current selection and my current selection does not contain any conditional formatting because I've selected here column I. Now I change my current selection to this worksheet and so then you should see it appear. I click on the rule and I click on edit rule. Now what I want to change is instead of referencing cell I3, I will directly write here cell, open parentheses, double quotation marks, row, double quotation marks, closing parentheses. So all we are doing is taking the function from cell I3 and directly putting it, putting it inside this formula bar here. So now we click on OK, OK once again. And so whenever I click somewhere, it still works. But now let's delete everything on the left hand side here. And so if you make clicks here, you can see the updating of the conditional formatting still works. So we are no longer dependent on any other cells. And this is a more clean approach. Now let's make one last change where we actually want to highlight also the cell that's currently selected. Now to highlight the currently selected cell, we'll be using some different functions. First of all, we'll have another look at cell. So we'll look at cell and the info type we're looking to return here is now the address. So in between double quotation marks, we have address. I close it. And so this simply gives me the address of the currently selected cell. So the next function we will be using is the address function. Now the address function will create a cell reference if we give it a row and a column number. So I open the parentheses. Let's say I give it row number two and column number four. I close the parentheses, press enter, and you can see that gets me D2. The last function we will have to take a look at is the column function. And this one works in exactly the same fashion as the row function that we saw earlier. The row function returned the row number of the current cell, at least the cell where you wrote the row function in. Well, the column function does exactly the same thing, but then for the column number. So if I now close the parentheses and press enter, you can see that gets me nine because we're currently in column I and that's the ninth column. So you might already be getting an idea as to how these functions might work together because we can use both the row and the column function as a reference within the address function. So I can write here address and then reference the row and the column that were returned by the row and the column function like that. Okay, let's take a look how this might work. You first select the data we want to highlight. So we start at the top left corner of our data. We press control shift right, control shift down. Then we go to conditional formatting and here we click on new rule. Once again, we are going to use a formula and here in the formula bar, we will be writing our formula starting with an equal sign. So the thing we need to check is if the address of the currently selected cell matches the current cell we want to format. So to get the address of the currently selected cell, we are going to be using the cell function, right? And then between double quotation marks, we write address. We close the double quotation marks and close the parentheses. Now, if this address is equal to the address that we will be creating using the address function, so I write address from the address function. And so then we want to do some highlighting. Now to construct the address with the address function, we will need the row and the column number of each row and column within our data. So we have address and so then we simply have a row function for the row and a column function 
for the column without any arguments into the row and column function. Now I close the parentheses to close off the address function. Now we have to pick a formatting, so we click on format and I will be picking a yellow fill. I click on OK and I click on OK once again. And so there we have it. The current cell now always has a new kind of formatting, in this case, yellow. So you can combine the formatting for the currently active cell and active row at the same time, if that isn't neat. So you can see the cell function is really powerful and you can use it for a lot of customizations that is using current selections. So whenever you want to do something based on the currently selected or active cells, then your best friend will be the cell function. Thanks for subscribing and leaving an optional tip. Consider watching this video next.